Hi you guys and welcome to one of my long awaited videos um, on the time commitment of being a bookkeeper. You guys, my name is Rachel Brown. This is Realistic Bookkeeping. I'm gonna try to keep it extra real with you about the amount of time I spend each week on bookkeeping. Now there's a pretty big distinction that you need to make within your bookkeeping business before you try to get into how many hours you're gonna spend on bookkeeping a week or by month. And that's whether you are part-time or whether you are full-time. And very obviously those have big um, changes in the time commitment of anything that's part-time versus full-time. But the reason that I like to talk about both is because I didn't start out bookkeeping full-time. That's not what this began as. If you followed my journey at all, then you know that I started this part-time on top of my teaching um, a full-time job, and now it's transitioned to a full-time job. Bookkeeping has completely replaced my full-time salaried position in the public school system. You can totally check out a video um, that I've made very recently about how I quit my job. Um, but let's talk about what kind of time was I spending on my bookkeeping clients when I was part-time, okay? And we need to make, make even two distinctions within the part-time realm. So when I was part-time, there was a period of bookkeeping where it was very small clients, some of it was tax returns, um, and I'll, I'll try to put a video maybe here or down below on the types of clients that I had at that point. And what I was probably spending a week was about, I don't know, five or six hours a month. Okay, so that means that maybe an hour a week, and that was probably split up into different times, like 30 minutes here, 30 minutes there. I was spending about an hour a week before I got my two big clients. So again, I kind of had some like myriad of little clients and some boys within the county. I was trying to help them set up their LLC um, and, and kind of their business structure and a little bit of bookkeeping records that they could do themselves, and then some tax return clients. Um, I had one client that I briefly helped on QuickBooks um, before he kind of took that, uh, that business off on his own. And I was not spending very much time on bookkeeping. Um, and then what happened was I went through a big transition in my part-time bookkeeping to getting two bigger clients. And these clients were in the range of $1,000 a month for their bookkeeping services. And, um, and I use these two businesses a lot in some of my um, examples on my basics of bookkeeping series, which I'll try to link here down below that playlist. I use them as examples, but those clients really became more part-time than I was doing before. And so I even have it written down here in January, February, June, August of 2020. Um, I, no, I guess I would have been 2021 because we're in 2022. Too many twos. In uh, last year, in those months, I was doing between like one hour a month and seven hours a month for those clients before the two big ones, okay? So it's pre kind of transition. Then once I got these two big bookkeeping clients, the ones that are $1,000 a month, I upped that, that monthly amount from five, seven, one to 25, 40 hours a month. Okay, now I'm saying it by month because that's kind of the way that I had my report run. But if you break that down per week, in September I spent 41 hours working on bookkeeping in that part-time realm. That was about 10 hours a week. So basically what I would do is I would leave my teaching job, I would go directly over to one of the client's um, home offices, and then I would spend about an hour and a half, five days a week over there. So that took my regular job that was, I, you know, I left the house at like seven in the morning, and I would have gotten off at 3.30, then I was working from seven to five in the evening. And this was really part of the reason that I transitioned to full-time bookkeeping is that that was too much. Um, with children at home and with uh, you know a house to, to keep up with, um, that wasn't what I was looking for. When I started to make that much of a time commitment outside of my full-time job, that's where I started to look at, could this replace my full-time job? And then instead of working seven to five, could I make more flexible hours for myself? And that was really the goal, right? Is to kind of be in control of my schedule. And that is where the really exciting part of this video takes place, is what does it look like now that I'm not part-time? It's not on top of my other full-time job, 
What does it look like now to be a bookkeeper full time? And what does my schedule look like? So let's get into that. So it is February of 2022 and I have been working for myself since the beginning of November. So that's November, December, January, and now we're in February. I'm going to talk about those three months that have already been completed, November, December, and January, so that you can kind of get a rough estimate of what my schedule now has looked like compared to what it did look like when it was um, part time. So in November, I worked a total of 98 hours that month, which which if you break that down to four weeks, even though a month is really like four and a half, it's about 24 hours a week that I was putting into my bookkeeping business. And that first month was a big transition, so I can't really tell you how exactly that felt to be working that much, other than I definitely felt like I was working full time with my bookkeeping business. Of course I was, but when I say full time, a lot of people wanna say, well, that's 40 hours a week. It's not necessarily what I was working, but I was full time bookkeeping. So that was about 24 hours a week in November. In December, it actually dropped a little bit. And the reason that this, you know, part of the reason for that is because of the holidays. So I took out, I took off about the week of Christmas, um, which was nice because it was obviously a personal choice to do so. And like a couple days around New Year's. Um, part of the reason I did that, not only did I want to enjoy the holidays, but my babysitter is also closed during this period of time. And so I had to watch my own kids. And I'll make a disclaimer about this later, but this is not a job that I recommend. You trying to juggle a stay-at-home mom or a stay-at-home dad environment and bookkeeping within those same hours. So if my kids were at um, the babysitter, then I wasn't gonna be bookkeeping during that time. So my December hours were 80 hours total for the month, and that was about 20 hours a week. So again, November, about 24 hours a week. December, about 20 hours a week. Weirdly enough, January even dropped a little bit, not much. Um, it was about 77 hours total for the month of January. And again, that worked out to be about 20 hours a week. I think part of the reason for that, again, is that in Central Virginia, we've had a couple of different snowstorms. And so my babysitter has been closed or I haven't felt safe to drive my kids. And so again, if I need to take off a day, I just don't bookkeep that day and it lowers my um, weekly hours. However, what's really nice about this and something that you need to keep in mind if you're really considering bookkeeping is that many of my clients, almost all of my clients are on a monthly rate. So I charge by the month and regardless of how many hours I spend, um, that is the amount that I charge. So, you know, it definitely fluctuates. I, I try to calculate, and I, I mean, I don't try to, I do. I calculate my hourly wage that I'm making each at the end of each um, month when I make the paycheck to myself, just to kind of check that I'm in the, you know, the, the, the price range that I need to be, that I wanna be. Um, and something that I do that maybe some people get out of the habit of, but I've really been um, consistent with, is using a time tracker for my monthly clients, obviously for my hourly clients, to know exactly the amount of time I'm spending on each client. Even if I'm not charging them by the hour, and you may think, well, it's irrelevant how many hours I'm spending, in this venture of going from part-time to full-time, it's really important for me to always kind of have a check-in on how much time I'm spending in case I need to change my monthly rate. I think this is something that is important to consider when th there's no one else, there's no boss that's taking care of you in this scenario. It's directly on you. You wanna make sure that you're really in tune to what you're charging and what you're putting into it. My favorite time tracker is called Toggle. I will list a video here that I made probably over a year ago on this um, on this time tracker. I've really enjoyed it. I have an app on my phone for Toggle Track as well as the desktop version. When I was doing this part time, it was definitely more on my phone. I would just you know left school, got to the the bookkeeping client's home office, hit play on the or you know start on the time app. And it was a really good way to keep track of my time. Now that I'm full time and I'm on my desktop a lot more, then I can pull it up in a separate web browser in a separate tab and just um, select the client that I'm working on and then stop it when I stop, when I switch over to a new client. And that may seem, again, like a lot, but it's really helpful in me trying to make sure that I have a clear picture of what I'm spending on each client. And it could be that in a year, that's just not necessarily where I need to put my efforts anymore and I've kind of got into my mind what I'm spending on each client. But for right now, I think it's a really crucial part of making sure that my hours and my charging are, um, you know, like harmonious. So what I'd like to do, um, I am gonna make a video probably in the next couple of weeks on a day in the life of the bookkeeper. A day in a life of a bookkeeper? A day in the life of a bookkeeper? Whichever, you know what I mean. Um, but I'm gonna make a video 
and kind of following me through the day. But for right now, what I'd like to do is kind of maybe post a picture here of what my week looks like from Toggle for past weeks and then kind of walk you through why I chose to do it that way and um, some pros and cons of working for yourself and your time management. So just briefly, the way that I kind of schedule my bookkeeping week, and I try really hard to plan this out on Sunday for the next, for the upcoming week, is that I basically book out um, three full days for bookkeeping, okay? So I book Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday for sure are a full bookkeeping day. Um, Monday is about half bookkeeping, maybe like an afternoon visit to one of my clients. And in the morning I do my YouTube creation, so you are welcome. And then Friday is kind of my catch all day. So if there's something that didn't happen for those three full bookkeeping days, then it may fall on Friday. Or I might schedule a client meeting for Friday. Well, we'll make a little side note here. I don't always get my client meetings into the regular chunk of my bookkeeping days. Sometimes those have to fall into the afternoons. Um, a virtual call, a phone call, sometimes even a home visit. And to have those meetings because the rest of that time is really already carved out for the bookkeeping work that I need to accomplish. Um, side note here though, on creating your own schedule, the flexibility is wonderful. If my son is sick for a day, I, you know, I take off, it's no big deal. Um, and, and those things are great, but you have to also remember that this is not like, I try to keep it real. This is not about being able to take off whenever you want. In, in the end, you are providing a service, which means you need to complete that service and provide that for your client. Um, so. You know, taking off one day just means extra work on another. It's all about a balance. Um, and, and yes, I schedule my week on Sunday for the upcoming week, but not everything always goes to plan. So the flexibility is wonderful, it's a great freedom, but it also comes with its kind of added stress. Um, yeah, so let's get into this week. So I might be looking over to the side just a little bit to reference, but basically on this week, um, and this was like two weeks ago at this point, um, I spent a good chunk of time on my YouTube on Monday. Um, I think I had like a, maybe a morning check-in with an, on my virtual client. Um, I didn't do like a FaceTime or anything, but it was virtual work that I was doing. So that morning session, I didn't have to be at that client's location for that work. Then I moved on to my YouTube work and then ended the day physically with um, uh, uh, like an in-office bookkeeping for one of my small clients. Well, they're one of my big clients, but one of my previous clients. Anyway, I'm talking over myself. Then on Tuesday, um, I actually went back to that office again, so that was in person, and then had some house chores that I needed to do, so I kind of took a little break, a little like gap there on Tuesday, and then had a year-end meeting with a tax prep um, client. I, I went in and we finished up some tax work. Um, the next day. So I kind of had like, I, I started on some of the tax prep um, or finished it up on Tuesday and then Wednesday spent about three hours with that client finishing up their tax return for 2021. I really have to get that straight. Um, I then I think I did some chores, uh, some like errands out and then I came back and worked on a virtual client as well as um, that small agriculture business um, in office. Then Thursday, I worked in the office again, so again, outside of my house, some online work, and then also a new client um, setting up some of their books. I was there for a while um, in office, trying to get some things sorted for the way that they had things already laid out. I finished up with some um, back in office at the farm again, and then on Friday, I had some more in office at the farm. I was there quite a lot that week. But you will see that I have a couple of time slots on Saturday. Um, so Saturday, I worked more on finishing up the tax prep um, session and the tax session that I had on Wednesday. Um, there were a couple of forms that um, he didn't have to wrap things up then, and then I did that part virtually. So let's make a note here really quick. In-person and virtual bookkeeping are gonna have different amounts of time um, investment. So you'll see, especially that week, I maybe had spent, I don't know, maybe maybe two or three hours on my virtual client, but many more hours in person for clients that I went to their home office um, or met with them in person for. And this is a fairly big distinction of what you wanna do as a bookkeeper. 
Um, there's so many people that gravitate towards the virtual end of bookkeeping, and I think that that's great. It can be a great fix, uh, a great fit for people. Um, I like the human interaction. I like going on site. Do I want to do it all on site? No, but I would like to have some some things that I do in office, and then some things that I can kind of come back home and kind of do at my leisure, um, and do it at other parts of the day that don't have to be so stringent upon um, being able to travel to those offices. And I will say that everyone that I travel to their home office, they're within 10 minutes of my home. So I do live in a very rural part of the of the country, but I'm working for people that are very close within my community, so it's not a big deal to go and travel to those places. But let's look at a second week, this would be last week, where things changed a little bit, and I'll explain why. In this next week, I definitely had some time slots um, that were on site at the, at the farm um, and some hours that were virtual, but I gained a two, well, it was really like one and a half new clients. So you saw in the previous week that there was one that one new client, big chunk of time, um, and then I really upped those hours for that client this week. So this is brand new that I was taking on. We did a little bit of setup and then this is when it really kind of started to be more of a time commitment. The second thing that was new this past week was I started to do some subcontracted work for a local CPA. Um, again, 10 minutes from here, I go in office and I scheduled out about six hours to work at the tax and accounting um, um, office. And I really enjoyed that. It was like a, 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 like a fresh insert to the week. Um, I am getting paid hourly and I will totally do a review on subcontracted work in the future on working under a CPA. Um, but I've, I've enjoyed filling some of my hours with that. It's definitely a balance in working for the CPA firm as well as my own bookkeeping clients. But I also kind of like that um, it's a little bit of a confidence boost in doing something for a CPA and knowing that my like work was approved. It's also nice to have that person in my, like, in my um, resource toolbox, right? If I'm working with one of my own bookkeeping clients, even if they're not a client of hers, um, it's, you know, we've formed a relationship now where if I had a question, like I could ask her and that's a really great connection to make that networking. It can be so important um, so that you don't feel so all alone. I think that there's one thing about bookkeeping for yourself and full time that can be very isolating. Um, and I, that maybe that's why I like that interaction of being in person and going to some of my clients offices, but a couple more notes here about um, your schedule for working for yourself and working full time or working part time. Um, you know, I, I make this around my life. I didn't want to work 40 hours a week being full time bookkeeping. Um, I didn't want to just replace my seven to three job, aka nine to five. I didn't want to fill all of those hours with bookkeeping and feel stressed out about it. I wanted the freedom and flexibility to make my life around my kids. Do I get my summers off like I did in teaching? No. Do I get paid snow days? No-ish, right? Maybe I don't log hours, but I'm still at my monthly rate for my clients. You know, um, do I, I don't know, do I have the freedom to kind of like check out of my job? No, although teachers don't check out, I can tell you that. But it's, it's, I'm still always my own boss. I'm still gonna answer the phone call. I'm still gonna answer a phone call if I have a client call me in the evening um, because I want to form that relationship where they know that they can count on me. I don't want, I wanna create healthy boundaries, but I'm still gonna put in hours after work because this is my, this is now my blood, sweat, and tears. This is my, my business and any small entrepreneur um, can connect with that. But Overall, I like the time structure that I, that I have. There's an ebb and a flow to it. Not every week is the same. Sometimes I have to act on my feet. Um, but you know, in, in the end, I'm loving it. And the best part is being in control. I love that control over my life and being the one to kind of call the shots and make my own positive work environment. I hope that you guys have found this helpful. I will try to link videos up down wherever so that you can find some more helpful resources. Please let me know down in the comments if you have any questions about my time commitment and I will see you guys next time.